Hello. Today I'm starting my project. It will be a concrete outdoor kitchen. This will be something bigger and more complex. It is an expensive project. Regarding the costs, I asked an acquaintance. He has a construction company, and he said that if a company does it, it will cost around four and a half thousand euros. However, that's just for the body, and my budget, which I have set for myself, is 600. Let's see how far I get. Let's get started. The outdoor kitchen will be here in the beautiful garden of my brother's garden, right here precisely. And the connections for electricity, water, and sewage are already in place and ready to use. The material for the formwork is already ready. As you can see, it's quite manageable, so you don't really need much. And we had the boards cut to the required dimensions right at the hardware store, which was very convenient. So now we don't have to do any more work with them. Then we will start with the formwork construction right away. First, we will build the large kitchen countertop where the sink will be installed. This is the size of the two countertops. It will be two meters long. Building the formwork is absolutely straightforward. Moreover, you just simply need a box with the desired dimensions of your countertop, and that's it. What annoys me a little about the board cuts at the hardware store is the inaccuracy, which can be frustrating. There is at least a one millimeter difference between the two boards, especially when you need precision for your project. Oh man, the two countertops will later appear to be five centimeter thick, but in reality, they will only be three centimeters. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Now we are first making the cutout for the sink here, and we are fixing it to the formwork base with silicone. For the cutout, you naturally have to go by the size of your sink. My brother wants to install a stainless steel sink here that he still has lying around. It has a draining board and is therefore a bit larger. Align everything properly so that it all fits, and then we can continue with the silicone joint. Those of you who have been following my channel for a while probably already know the trick. Before I apply the silicone joint, I will apply some furniture wax to the joints. And that makes it really very easy to absolutely remove the excess silicone. These are small but more extremely effective tricks that save you work. And then we continue with the silicone. And for smoothing, I use these modeling balls as always. It makes it extremely easy. The necessary formwork for the concrete kitchen is ready. Tomorrow we will continue with the concreting. Hello people, today we are starting with the concreting. It's extremely hot, but I'm also highly motivated. So let's get started. The mixer is already set up so we can begin. Before I mix the concrete in a moment, we need to quickly finish the formwork, remove the excess silicone, and you'll see right away what a bit of wax can do. This can now all be removed easily and without any residue. Without wax, it would stick, and you would have to scrape it off, which would result in a perfectly clean joint. I am now applying a release agent to the surface of the formwork. This will make it easy to remove the concrete later and achieve optimal exposed concrete results. There isn't much to consider. The product is applied as a very thin film, and the excess is wiped off with a cloth. For the outdoor kitchen, I will use regular concrete mix from the hardware store for the concreting. Here is the finished bagged product. But I will definitely add an extra additional 3 to about 5% cement to the concrete, because manufacturers often absolutely cut corners on the cheaper mixes. And we will need quite a bit of concrete for the kitchen as well. I have calculated that it will be around 400 kilo. The concrete I am using for the two countertops will also be mixed with microsilica. This is a very fine additive, which makes the concrete even more durable and the surface even finer. So, you get even smoother surfaces with it. Indeed. One more important tip for you. So if you are working with microsilica or other fine aggregates, wear a respirator because this stuff is so fine that if you inhale it, it settles in your lungs and you don't want that. So let's get started with the concreting. For the concrete mix, as I mentioned before, I added extra cement along with basil and glass fibers. Additionally, I also added a plasticizer, 2001. I immediately mixed the plasticizer with the mixing water, which will make the concrete easier to work with and finish later. Due to the added plasticizer, the concrete will have a flowable consistency without exceeding the water cement ratio. And yes, when the concrete looks like this, you can start with the concreting.
while concreting this time, I had to hurry a bit because the concrete set quite quickly due to the summer temperatures. Yes, it was a bit more stressful than usual this time, and yes, there was a lot of concrete to work with. I first filled the formwork with approximately 2 cm of concrete and then also added the reinforcement. As you can see, I used a reinforcement mesh and additional rebar because the opening is quite large and a lot of concrete tends to remain on the sides. These are the spots that tend to crack under load as well. After the reinforcement was placed, I filled the formwork with concrete up to 2 cm below the top edge and then inserted a 2 cm thick seriator plate. I fixed the plate in order to ensure that it would not float, which also helps to save a significant amount of weight because the plate is only 2 cm thick instead of 5 cm. I then carefully compacted the concrete in the formwork, ensuring the countertop was finally finished. After that, I continued with the supports. I proceeded in the same way as with the countertop, except that I did not insert any reinforcement, as no bending forces are expected here. Since the components are quite massive and I will have to move them somehow later, I embedded styrofoam plates to reduce weight. They will remain in the concrete permanently. I then covered the freshly concreted components with a plastic sheet. This is definitely necessary for curing at higher temperatures, because otherwise the water contained in the concrete, which is needed for setting, evaporates through the surface, making the concrete less durable and possibly porous. All right, folks, I'm definitely done with the concreting marathon. That was really a lot of stuff, and I'm absolutely done for today. In two days, it's time for stripping. Two days have passed, and the concrete has cured enough for us to strip the formwork. Let's take a look. Stripping the formwork is always the most exciting part of working with concrete, because it's only then that you see how the surface has really turned out. And yes, you definitely have to have done it yourself first, otherwise you can't understand the apprehension you have about it. I've spontaneously decided I will polish the surface. It's not really necessary because the concrete is already very smooth due to the formwork. But this way, you can naturally improve the appearance a bit and the dirt resistance. And the tools, I already have them anyway. The only thing I still haven't actually gotten for smoothing is a rubber apron. But in a pinch, an old garbage bag will do. Grinding, I use these diamond grinding discs. They come in different grits. You can do it by hand. A machine is faster. I then sanded the polishing discs with grits ranging from 400 to 3000. You sand each grit until the disc just glides over the surface and then you move on to the next higher grit. I don't want to go into detail about loops here. I recently made a detailed video about it. And if you're interested about the topic, then check out the video. Take a look at how smooth the surface is. It's amazing. I sanded it down to 6000 grit. A baby's bottom is really like sandpaper compared to this. I am satisfied with the progress of the project. I will let the concrete cure, then we will start assembling the kitchen carcass. Excited, 2001. We have already assembled the individual concrete elements, so the body of the outdoor kitchen is up and looks pretty good, I would say. The weight was manageable too. We carefully placed the supports here on these rubber mats. This allows you to slightly adjust the slope of this pavement a bit. And we fixed the supports at several points with metal brackets. So now it's a really stable setup, nothing wobbles anymore. We placed the plates on more silicone points, and they are also secure. I must say, everything has worked according to plan. I hope it stays that way. I am really satisfied. To ensure the concrete looks good for a long time, you also need to definitely apply a sealant. I have done this before in two steps. I combined two different products. One is Polytech Max and the other is Provault Second. This sealant has the advantage that it does not alter the natural concrete look in any way and is also absolutely food safe, 2001. The sealants are applied in two passes. First, I applied the Colortech Max. It is best applied evenly with a roller using a crisscross pattern. You wait 24 hours. And after 24 hours, you can proceed with the second agent with the Provault Second. 
And now you can see that the concrete absorbs much less moisture. You let it harden again, and then the sealing is done. And now I'll show you how the protective effect works on the surface. 2001. I will now demonstrate the whole thing here with a bit of water. And you can already see the separation effect on the surface quite well. So it no longer absorbs moisture. We clad the front of the outdoor kitchen with herombus strips. First, we built a frame, which we then attached to the concrete. Through the frame, we naturally got the exact measurements for the front, because the corpus itself is, of course, not perfectly straight at exactly every angle. We used roof battens for the strips. We cut them at an angle on both sides using the table saw. To ensure that the gaps and spacing on the entire front are uniform later on, we first built the front and then cut out the doors and aligned them properly with hinges. Otherwise, it would have been even more extremely difficult to achieve a uniform and consistent look. And then the corpus and the front of the outdoor kitchen were finished. And I would say, now let's take a look at the result. The outdoor kitchen is not completely finished yet. An outdoor shower is still to be built on the right side. And once that is done, the water connection will be made and a splash guard will be added to the back of the countertop. But that's not a big effort anymore, just small things that need to be done. The design of our kitchen is now rather simple, but with this construction method, it can easily be changed. That's not a problem at all because you can ultimately design the kitchen from different modules and on different levels. To be honest, I would have liked to make the outdoor kitchen a bit bigger and more elaborate, but the space and therefore the dimensions were unfortunately predetermined. Well, I think the result is still quite impressive. So folks, you've seen the finished outdoor kitchen and now you surely want to know how much the whole thing cost. I initially estimated around $600 for the corpus and cladding, but I ended up spending even less. The materials cost a total of $440. The sink is obviously not included in that amount, as my brother had an old one lying around. The only thing he still needs to get is a suitable faucet and a siphon set to connect it. My conclusion about the project with the outdoor kitchen is that I am really satisfied. It turned out just as I imagined. And I would say this is a project that any of you can replicate because the workload is manageable, you don't need many machines. And in terms of craftsmanship skills, it's not rocket science, to be honest. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, watch a few more of my videos, support the channel, and tune in again next week. Until then, take care. Bye.